Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're joining us from around the world. My name is Scott Legard. I'm the Systems Engineering Manager for Cisco in New Zealand, and welcome to DevNet Create. Today, we're joined by two uh, members of our broader DevNet community, uh, Michael Petrinovich from Sydney in Australia, and Martin Rees from Adelaide, also in Australia. And today, we're going to have a chat about DevNet, the impact on both of them in terms of their careers and what they're seeing with their customers that they're working with, and how we're going to move forward with what's happening in the developer world with automation, reliability, and programmability. Um, Michael, I'll start with a, a couple of questions for you. Uh, you've had a, a very interesting career uh, inside Cisco, uh, and you've managed to gather up quite a few certifications along the way. I mean, starting, I guess, with your, your CCIEs, both in route switch uh, and in data center. Uh, and from what I understand, you, know, you were probably one of the first people in the world to actually have a combined uh, CCIE in both route switch and data center. Tell us a little bit about what it is that's actually motivated you to, to go after those certifications and what you've actually got out of having those. Yeah, thanks. Um, so having those certifications, look, you know, it's not something that I set out to, to do. Uh, where, you know, when I first kind of left uni and then came into, into Cisco, uh, but I was always wanting to, to learn. So I've always got the, this hunger to, to learn and do things, learn things, and then kind of wanted to have something to show for that, especially when I was still in my early days within Cisco. And that kind of led me to, to the route switch uh, exam. Um, but then throughout my career, then I started to transition into the data center space. Uh, and I did a lot of work in the, in the DC space. And then obviously we came out with, with the data center CCIE. And obviously then, that, then a real first came there. I wanted to have something to show for, for all the, the expertise that I've gathered over the years um, and then the extra cherry on top was hey being a brand new exam you could be one of the first in the world to actually uh, obtain the data center ccie which which i was i wasn't probably the first but i was definitely probably in the top 10 uh globally so that was that was a real uh achievement you know that that i was really proud of well absolute kudos to you uh mike for for, for going down that path and i know that the ccie is not a not an easy thing to do, let alone to, to have gotten two under your belt. So uh, really well done. And it's good to see that, you know, you're personally seeing the, the value out of both the learning uh, and the certification side of getting those, those, those certifications. Moving forward a little bit, you know, into more recent times, uh, obviously the DevNet uh, uh, crew have set up their own new certification tracks. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey along the DevNet certification path. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I was extremely excited once uh, DevNet uh, announced the, the certification. Um, and, and effectively, when I, if, if I take you through the, the, the journey very quickly, I mean, it, it actually started while I was still at uni. I mean, I did a computer science degree, so I majored in networking, but I did obviously a lot of uh, programmability, uh, you know, we're talking old school, you know, like C, C++, that kind of I think back in the day, but effectively, I always had that uh, understanding of at least the programming logic, um, and, and, and I want to actually try to apply that in my day-to-day -day job, right? So, especially once I joined Cisco in the TAC, uh, I had to do a lot of recreates. I had to try and help our customers, uh, you know, to simulate their problems, and I actually brought in a lot of the, the programmability knowledge that I had from university into into that, right? Um, so it was something that I kind of always blended between, you know, your domain expertise in terms of route switch or, or DC, um, as well as then, you know, the use cases and the, the tools and the best practices from a developer mindset, right? Uh, and I kind of blended the, the two together. And, and you know, that, I think that was, especially with the transition in the industry, uh, it basically came to being in the right place at the right time, right? Um, and then effectively, DevNet came out with the certifications. I, I loved it. I looked at it. Go, yeah, definitely, that's something that I want to achieve. Again, uh, you know, to be able to have something to, to show for all the, the years of, of um, experience that I had, uh, and, you know, the gratification of, hey, there's something new out there. Let me, let me try and go get myself tested and, and see if I'm up to the mark. And, you know, when I actually passed uh, those exams, you know, when they were first released, uh, yeah, it was an awesome, awesome uh, gratification, right? Being able to pass that, uh, and especially something being so new. 
there's certainly a lot of advantages in living in the, the parts of the world that we live in, right? And, and one of those is absolutely the fact that, uh, you know, due to not only your own magnificent efforts, but also the, the joy of time zones, uh, you know, I don't know if you were the first in the world, but you must have been pretty darn close to being the first in the world to actually sit and pass the, the DevNet Associate exam. So um, massive hat off uh, to you, Michael. Uh, really great effort. And, and awesome to hear how you've been able to actually take that experience that you've had you know, like you say, going back to university, talking about uh, your, your time in tech, about being able to automate and recreate things uh, to help out customers is, is, you know, really testament to the applicability of all of those programmability and automation skills um, in, a, in, in the current uh, environment that we find our, ourselves all in today. Uh, maybe uh, one, one question for you before I then flip over to Martin. In terms of the programmability aspect of, you know, whether it's in route switch, whether it's in data center, whether it's in any of the other realms that that uh, that you manage to touch. What have you seen from our customers and our partners in terms of what's the value that they're getting out of automation and programmability in their environments? Um, uh, look, it's it definitely something that's been a, uh, let's say, a slow burn uh, in the sense that, um, they, they've seen the value and they, they understood it, I guess, early on. Um, but it was one of those things, oh, that seems too hard. I don't want to go down that path. I don't have the right skill set. I don't have the, um, the engineers to be able to facilitate that. Um, but over the, over the past few years, it's definitely something that's gained a lot more momentum uh, within the industry. And, and you know, now as a, as a technical solution architect, I'm talking with customers constantly on a daily basis it, um, it, in terms of, you know, what do they want uh, today and then what are they looking at for the future? And, you know, nine times out of ten, you know, some sort of automation, some sort of simplicity from a programmability perspective, some sort of new way of thinking, new way of actually achieving their outcomes that they want is definitely always up in that conversation, right? Um, and, and they're starting to see those benefits as well in terms of, you know, being able to uh, save time in, in regards to, uh, you know, their day-to-day -day operations, being able to, I guess, minimise risk to the business, you know, mitigate uh, the human error element where they can then start to automate, they can start to test, validate before actually pushing those changes into production um, and looking at it in the lens of uh, being able to, um, you know, uh, customise and in, into their own tools, workflows and processes, and then ultimately being able to free up their resources so they can then start to deliver on other value-add uh, back to their business, back to their customers, and back to their stakeholders. So, um, you know, all around, it, it's something that's been a slow burn, but definitely more and more people are looking at it and, and definitely, you know, wanting to actually implement that within their own environment um, moving forward. Thanks, Michael. Always valuable to get the perspective of, of what you're seeing uh, our customers are doing and the, and the advantages that they're getting out of looking at things around automation. Uh, and I also like your comments around uh, risk minimization and simplicity, right? I think that's key for, for any organization, uh, whether they're an end customer, whether they're a partner, uh, driving a drive towards simplicity is gonna help everybody, uh, not only in the long run, but in the short term as well. So I guess on, on, on that note, I'll, I'll flip over and, and uh, have a quick chat with Martin. Martin, you've, you obviously looking at this from a different perspective. You know, Michael's looking at it from a, uh, from a Cisco inside looking out perspective, looking out towards our customers and partners, you're on that other side uh, of the of the fence, if you like, in terms of being out there in that particular realm. Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, for a start, you know, your background and, and your technology expertise is is in slightly different areas than than Michael's. He's you know route switch data center focus. I knew knew you were more a collaboration and a and a wireless person. Tell us about how you your journey through, you know, picking up those particular technology areas and what, what's uh, relevant uh, in those areas today when you look at them and what's happening in programmability automation and then the, the DevNet world. Yeah, certainly. So, uh, like you mentioned, I'm, I'm more focused on the collaboration and wireless space, mainly on collaboration um, and at the partner level. So, outside of Cisco, but still implementing all of the Cisco solutions uh, for our customers. So, um, really, there's, there's a lot in collaboration that is uh, slow and and tedious to, to configure. So really being able to automate and, um, and and have some reliability around the configurations within the collaboration environment, both for on-premise and cloud. 
um, being able to automate those sorts of solutions for customers just speeds up the uh, the turnaround on on tasks for our customers, projects, and just uh, the quality of the end result means that we're producing um, constantly accurate results rather than um, typos or misconfiguration or forgetting to do something. Absolutely. Again, some, some consistent themes coming out there in terms of the repeatability and the reliability of doing things in, a, in an automated fashion. If you look at the, the, the world of, of collaboration, you mentioned obviously that there's, a, um, there's been a move, you know, not just in collaboration, but in terms of multiple product sets to having more you know, cloud hosted solutions as opposed to on-premises solutions, right? What are some of the, the areas of the, the collaboration, be they on-premises or, or, or cloud-based, that you feel have really helped uh, with that automation and that, that reliability path? Yeah, so really being able to um, automate taking customers from on-premise to cloud is a big one that we've visualized. Um, so not having to visit every single endpoint, which might be staggered all over Australia, for example, um, we can automate the migration of, of video endpoints from being on-premise registered to a VCS or Expressway or, or a call manager um, over to the cloud environment. So that has um, sped up a lot of the process of migrating users from on-prem to a hybrid or, or to a completely cloud-based solution. Um, whereas in the past, we would have had to have hands and feet on uh, out of every site around the, the country just to achieve the, the task. And doing that all at the same time is obviously very hard to do in a, in a country the size of Australia. Absolutely. So it certainly sounds like there's a lot of benefits for, for partners in terms of you know, adopting these you know, newer methodologies of, of automation on a programmability to, to make your lives easier and to hopefully deliver a, a better outcome for the customer at the end of the day. Uh, what sort of things have you seen after you've had that, that sort of you know, day zero, day one rollout implementation? Uh, as you've moved into, if you call it, you know, day two operation side of things, right? What advantages have you seen in terms of adopting these newer ways of working uh, in the in the ongoing maintenance space? And what what uh, advantages do you believe that uh, your customers are getting out of you as a partner adopting those practices? Yeah, certainly. So really in the in the Meraki space especially, that's where we've leveraged the, the day two side of things uh, as much as possible because then we can complete could just have standard configurations across the board. So even if a customer needs to change 15, 20, 30, however many sites, even five, um, it, it means that we can push a configuration change um, that might be a new policy or content filtering, for example, we can push that to all of their sites instantly in, in one go rather than having to have someone sit there and click multiple times through different windows and then still have the possibility that they don't select the right um, content categories, for example. We can push that as a standard and uh, instantly all of the uh, networks within the Meraki organisation have that policy applied. Certainly the... the I certainly hear from a lot of customers and partners that uh, it's that consistency of policy uh, being able to be pushed out, whether that's a security policy or a network configuration policy or any other kind of policy, right? It's the, the ability to have that repeatable, reliable and consistent across end-to-end -end across the organisation is, is a huge advantage uh, in terms of, of moving down these particular paths. Um, if I look at a slightly different thing, you've been a a member of the Cisco Champion uh, community for a number of years now, right, in terms of having early access to some of the Cisco uh, technologies and, and, a, and a pool of, of global people uh, that you can you know, call on and, and talk to. And that's been a, a fantastic and sort of community exercise. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that. But I'd also like you to talk about uh, what it's been like uh, now being part of the DevNet community and, and how that's actually helped you, or if it's helped you, uh, which I'm, I hope it has. Uh, in terms I, of, I think it has, yes. Yeah, in, in terms of whatever aspects you'd like to talk about. Yeah, so certainly the, the Cisco Champions community, um, the community itself is great just because you've got a lot of partners and customers out there and they're the 
the advocates for Cisco, um, but you get the honest opinion about Cisco as well. Um, but you've got a sounding board, which is the, the most important thing. So there's plenty of other people um, with the same sort of experiences and the same problems as you around the world. Um, and it might be that someone else has come across the issue before or has a different idea or, or views on things. So you're actually able to um, network with a lot of people from around the world um, as well as get access to early betas and and information around uh, upcoming products and events so that uh, you, you know what's what's coming up. Um, really, the, the Champions community is about um, networking with everyone and um, sharing the, the experience and your knowledge with everyone. Um, as far as the DevNet community goes, uh, I've I've sort of been involved with DevNet uh, at uh, Cisco Lives for quite a few years now. Um, actually, the the very first year I remember DevNet being there, I was sort of like, oh, what's what's all this about? Quite unsure. Went to one session, still wasn't too sure. But then the following year, I uh, I took the plunge and and attended a lot of sessions and and came away with my head spinning um, with all the possibilities of of all the things that you can do. Um, and the DevNet community is great there. So the the learning labs that have been provided um, really give you a great track to um, attend a, a 30 minute session at Cisco Live, for example, and then take away some of the ideas from that, but um, stretch yourself further and, and learn more examples and get some hands on uh, experience through the through the learning labs. So really. It, it, Getting involved at, at a Cisco Live and, and dipping your toe in is just the start and then taking it further with the, the learning labs and all of the content that DevNet provide um, really helps you to get a, a good start on, uh, on your DevNet journey. Excellent. Thanks, Martin. Michael, I might just uh, flip back to you for, for a moment. You know, Martin's talked about uh, you know, DevNet zones at Cisco Live, and we've obviously had those here uh, in, in the Australian New Zealand region for the last several years, and we've, those have been run globally um, as well. Uh, I know that you've been involved in a number of the DevNet zone as, uh, events and, uh, and sessions that we've been uh, holding locally, uh, but you've also been involved in other uh, DevNet events as well where we've been taking uh, out the educational message uh, to our customers and our partners around DevNet and giving them uh, hands-on capabilities of that. Uh, would you like to talk to some of the activities that you've been engaged in, either in the DevNet zone, but also with some of the DevNet Express events, of which there's been a large number uh, run in this part of the world? Yeah, look, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> exactly what Martin was just saying in terms of uh, DevNet, so developer.cisco.com, you know, is definitely your one-stop shop for where you want anything developer from Cisco, right? Um, and, and essentially, you know, we've been, uh, to your point, uh, doing DevNet locally here within the ANZ market uh, for quite some time. Uh, you know, I've already had some uh, this year, obviously, due to uh, unforeseen circumstances in, in the global world that we are today. Um, but we're still running them, right? We've been able to transition and actually now run them as a virtual event. Um, obviously, that brings its own uh, challenges, but we still see the interest. We still see... Um, you know, our, our customers and partners actually wanting to, to go on that learning journey. And it is a journey at the end of the day, right? Because it, it's, it's there for us to be able to present, you know, the fundamentals from, from a programmability perspective, in terms of what are the capabilities of a lot of those Cisco solutions, depending on, you know, is it a DC track? Is it a, a DNA um, kind of DNA center type track, collab security? whatever it happens to be. But at the end of the day, it's really about, you know, wetting the, the people's appetite to say, you know what, there is a different way of actually approaching this. There is a different way to solve these business challenges, uh, you know, and exactly to your point, you know, that's in a, in a repeatable and a consistent fashion that we can then start to get some of those other benefits that we were talking about, right? Um, and then, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, I've been fortunate enough as well to be able to go around the globe for, for Cisco Live. Uh, and present at you know both the DevNet zone and you know standard Cisco Live, and, and just seeing that growth of of the DevNet zone, you know, even just me personally from my own sessions over the years talking around Net DevOps and and that those kinds of uh, topics and those aspects, you know, what started off with only maybe five, ten, fifteen people, you know, now it's consistently getting over a hundred people in those types of sessions, depending on where I am in the world. Uh, and just seeing that that thirst for knowledge and the, the want to do things differently. And then obviously, you know, Cisco's coming out with a lot of different solutions that are being used as a catalyst, as a, an enabler to actually then, 
you know, consume services from Cisco. And when I say services, I'm talking about, you know, DC net, uh, networking or enterprise networking, collab security, you know, these different programmatic methods of access that enable them to, to then think of these awesome ways to actually then integrate that into their own tools and workflows in order to solve their challenges. And, and just being able to be part of that community um, globally, you know, the, the, the willingness for everyone to, to actually help one another as Martin highlighted earlier, right, is that soundboard where people are just, you know, extremely helpful. Hey, I don't know how to really achieve this or how would you approach this? Um, you know, if I think about my WebEx teams, uh, it's probably one of the most active rooms that I'm in, you know, some of those DevNet related spaces, uh, the amount of uh, communication, both from Cisco perspective, as well as the partner community, as well as, you know, end customers and everyone's just free, freely willing to help one another in order to, to just help. Right, and it's awesome to see from where it's been to where it is today, and who knows where it's going to go in the future. I'm sure it's going to be you know a hundred times better as well, and that's awesome. Absolutely, uh, Michael. Uh, I'll go to you first, then then follow up with you, Martin. What are you most looking forward to to hearing about um, at Virtual DevNet Create? Uh, probably, you know, it's hard to pinpoint one specific thing, but new ideas. I think because everyone has their own flavor, everyone has their own um, ways of approaching, you know, challenges and, and actually trying to produce a solution to that. And then just seeing how, you know, these different challenges, these different things that people are trying to achieve, and then how they're using, you know, effectively DevNet and the programmability and the automation aspects of, of what we have to offer in order to actually achieve those outcomes. Because the way I might think of something and, and seeing how someone else actually approaches it, to me, again, goes back to my, my lifelong learner type of mentality and just seeing the different ways of actually achieving something uh, to me is, is what brings the biggest joy and what I'm really looking forward to. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Martin, how about you? Yes, yeah, so I guess uh, like Michael, I always like to learn. So for me, um, having a, a DevNet Create that's in an Australian time zone is great to start off with. Um, don't have to be up as early. But uh, I always find that with uh, DevNet Create, uh, for the sessions that I can get to in the mornings, uh, I, I just jump onto any session I can, uh, even if it's not a, a collab track. It's always interesting to see what other domains and other technologies are doing and what you can do. Um, there's so much out there that because you spend all of your day focused on, on collab or wireless or DC like Michael, then you, you don't have the necessarily the time to to see what others are doing and what what can be done out there. So um, having a half hour session where you might be able to get uh, learn something completely new about containers or 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 data center, even for me, um, it just gives you the idea of what else is out there and what else can be done. Um, so it just takes you outside of your bubble and it's only half an hour. You can absorb something very quickly and just get an idea of what else is being done out there. That's brilliant. Thank you, Martin. And thank you, Michael, very much for taking the time to talk with us today about your particular journeys uh, with the developer and with programmability and automation. Uh, it's been really valuable to gain the insights from both of you, uh, both from a Cisco SE perspective, uh, Michael, and from a partner perspective. Martin around the, the impact that uh, programmability is having uh, not only on your careers individually, uh, but on your interactions and the value that you're able to add uh, for your customers uh, today and for the future. So thank you very much for your time today uh, and thank you for being part of this global community uh, of uh, developer.cisco.com. Uh, we really do appreciate uh, both of your, your inputs and your contributions to the community going forward. And we really look forward to uh, what else we've got coming up for the rest of the day at DevNet Create. Thanks very much, everybody.